This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Champions League Night on the Football Daily Podcast. Bienvenido. I'd like to say from sunny Spain, but it's not. It's, uh, it's actually raining. I also have a confession to make as well. We're not in Villarreal. We're in Valencia, which is about a 50-minute drive away from where Liverpool will be playing their Champions League semi-final second leg. The reason for that, I think there's actually only one hotel in, uh, in Villarreal. It has a population of about 50,000. It's a very tight, compact ground uh, of about 25,000. But just to think, the whole population of Villarreal can actually fit inside Anfield, uh, where, of course, Liverpool last week secured themselves a 2-0 first leg advantage to bring here to, uh, to Spain. So I would imagine that the travelling Liverpool fans are dotted around. Some will be in Valencia here. Others might be in Castellon, which is about 20 minutes away from Villarreal. And others might be a little bit down the coast in uh, Alicante. That building over there is uh, La Agora. It's a very futuristic looking building, 70 metres high. And we're in the, it's by the, the science and arts complex here in Valencia. So a man who likes his culture, no better than Chris Sutton. How are you? <laughs> very well, yeah. you're a man of facts, aren't you? Well, I, I've, done my, I've done my homework. Someone had accused me earlier of not doing enough work, and that was just proof that you know I'd, I'd like to do you know a little bit of research uh, ahead of this game, which is going to be a fascinating match. Unai Emery said last week after the first leg that Liverpool will suffer a lot more in this second leg. How do you see it? Um, well, Villarreal have to have to come out and be more expansive than they were at Liverpool. That's how I see it. If they want to get back into this tie, the first goal is going to be absolutely crucial. But I think Liverpool are going to be in for a, you know a more sterner test. I mean, they have to be. Villarreal went to Anfield to contain. They did that to some extent, but then you know once the first goal went in, then Liverpool got the second. Uh, through Sadio Mane, uh, you think it's a long way back for Villarreal. But what we do know from them throughout this competition, they've knocked out Juventus, they've knocked out Bayern Munich, and I'm sure Jurgen Klopp won't be underestimating them. Well, he was a little irked in his press conference because the opening question was, job done? And he actually replied to that by saying, "If uh, if I was a lot younger, I'd have been very angry with that opening question. Maybe you can be old and angry. Well, can't you? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> case yeah, in you point, can. Case you can, in point, yeah. 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 But it, it does highlight the fact that the job isn't done. Uh, yes, but do you know what? I think I can understand the question as well because, I, but I, but I can because it was so one-sided uh, the first leg, and and Liverpool were so dominant, and and you know, in many respects, I suppose the Liverpool Liverpool players with you know, the two-goal advantage, everything else which they've got to play for this season. Oh, look, are they going to switch off? I don't think Jurgen Klopp will let them switch off. I think they're too professional for that. But, you know, whether it's complacency or, or you know, or just starting the game slowly or whatever, you know, that that cannot happen. Because what, the, what Liverpool can't do is let Villarreal back into this tie and, and give them any encouragement. Well, let's hear from Jurgen Klopp, prompted by, of course, the comments from Unai Emery and the challenges that his side face. Champions League semi-final is the most important game you can play. Let me say the second most important game you can play. Maybe the final is more important, but for this moment, it's the most important game you can play, and that's why. Whatever would have happened in the last few weeks, in the next few weeks, that's, that's not important. It's, for this moment, it's clear. Um, that's it. We have to be ready to play a, 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 a top, 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 top game because... They will, how I said, they will go for us. They will high press. Um, they will try to play much more football than we allowed them in the, in the, in, the, in the first game. Um, we will have to suffer, and we will be, have to be ready to suffer, and we will have to sit back in moments definitely, but not as a general approach. So, Unai will for sure try to to, to adapt a few things to our style in this in this short spell. Um, so, it will be really interesting. So Jurgen Klopp admitting that his side might suffer, but it's how they react to that as the rain continues to fall here yeah, in, no, uh, I notice in Spain. I'm, I'm standing in the rain and you're, you're not. Well, Strategic, was it? Well, it's not. I'm just glad I'm not wearing my glasses because I might need windscreen wipers. Um, <laughs> anyway, I want to talk to you about the, the challenges that Liverpool face because if ahead of tomorrow's game, 
They've got seven potential finals now as they go for this unprecedented quadruple. We're going to hear from Trent Alexander-Arnold in a moment. You've been in this situation with Celtic in 2003. You weren't going for a quadruple, but you were going for a treble. A League Cup, the title and the UEFA Cup. Mm -hmm. That season, you came away with nothing. Oh, well, thank you for reminding me of that. You lost the title on goal difference on the last day. You were beaten in the League Cup final and you lost in the UEFA Cup. But tell us, I didn't mean to bring that up. Dear me. Just proof again wow, of further yeah. research and work that yeah. I've been doing for those who I, think that I, I haven't I, been I've doing it. I've got any. a six game ban as well after that last game. But take us back to that time in the dressing room because Trent Alexander Arnold says they're thriving in this situation. You've been there at a business end of a season, you're going for silverware. What's it like? Is there that fear of failure? Uh, well, li- Liverpool already have one trophy in the bag, you know, and, uh, and you know, talk of a quadruple. When this, uh, the talk first started about the quadruple, you're thinking, it's not going to happen. It, it just isn't going to happen. It can't happen. But this Liverpool team are so good. The issue Liverpool have is Manchester City are so good as well. But, I mean, literally, it will be one game at a time, focus on the next game. And I thought the performance against Newcastle, I thought that was a really tricky tie. And actually, I know, you know, the, the, the scoreline was uh, Liverpool only won by the, by the one goal. But I thought that was a really dominant display from them against a, a Newcastle team who have been on fire in, in recent times. Uh, and they'll just be concentrating on the process, the next game. And, and the beauty of Liverpool this season, I think they've got the strongest squad that Jurgen Klopp has ever had. And, you know, to leave Mo Salah out, to leave Alexander-Arnold out, to leave Thiago out, Fabinho out at, uh, at the weekend, that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, but it's about the next game and getting this job done. It's a, it's, it's a tie we're all expecting Liverpool to go through in. I mean, it would be a massive shock. One of the biggest shocks, I think, ever in the Champions League if Villarreal can turn it round. And Liverpool just have to guard against that. I don't wish to upset somebody who's old and angry, but you actually haven't answered the question. I said, can you take me into the dressing room and that fear of failure? Uh, Is there a fear of failure? I, I don't think they fear failure. They, a, absolutely no, but did not. Did you? Because you've been did there. We, give, uh, give us the insight. No, I don't think we feared failure. I just, I just think it's about it's about the process. You, you, you know, you don't look too far ahead in these situations. It's just about dealing with the next game, the, uh, the next challenge, the next team, and they'll they'll be all sorts of different challenges. You know, teams have different styles. Villarreal Park, the Vassar Anfield, but they're going to have to come out and be expansive. I think that plays into Liverpool's hands, and that's all you can do. If you, if, you know, if you look too far in the distance, you take your your eye off what's right in front of you. And, uh, you know, you have to win the next game. It's about winning. It's about, you know, churning out results. And, and that's all Liverpool have been doing. And they need to continue that process if they want to win the quadruple. Well, let's hear from Trent Alexander-Arnold, who's relishing these set of fixtures. I think, looking back on the, the two previous semis, we made it quite difficult for ourselves, especially in the, them second legs. We've had to, to dig deep and, and, um, and see the game out. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to do it a little bit easier than, than what we had previously. Uh, but when you do get so close to it, you start to kind of have the memories of what it felt like, the lead up to it, the, the special feelings you had, sharing it with your family and, and obviously your teammates and the staff and things like that. And it is, it's an exciting time. So I think you know, one game away from from getting there again is um, is exciting for us. We put in the work this season, had a had an excellent campaign so far, and um, seen off a lot of a lot of difficult opponents, and then hopefully. So tomorrow I'll be able to, to put them put them to bed and um, get to our, I think it's their final five years ahead. So uh, it's a good sign. Hopefully we'll be able to get there. Something else, Chris, that Trent Alexander-Arnold said was the fact that this time last year, you know, they can't take things for granted because 12 months ago they were fighting to get into the Champions League, not fighting for four trophies. They were trying to get into the top four. Yeah, oh, look, it, it was a blip last season, you know. I, I think that, uh, you know, that any team, you know, may have that happen to Liverpool and it's, it's about how you bounce back. We all have our, our bad moments, don't we, Ian? And it happened to Liverpool last season. I mean, incredible, the Allison moment at West Brom, a goalkeeper scoring. I mean, amazing stuff. But uh, they're making the most of it this season. And the, the race between Manchester City and Liverpool in the Premier League and that challenge in the Champions League. I mean, Liverpool are a brilliant, brilliant team. 
but they want to finish uh, this season with a lot of trophies and it's going to be interesting how it pans out, who's going to win what. I was on the plane today with a Liverpool fan who said, I would prefer the Premier League than the Champions League and I suppose, I suppose City fans would say the opposite, would they? I think they would. I think uh, when they were in this situation 2019, uh, the f- few months after the season had finished, Pep Guardiola was at a, an FWA event in Manchester where he was looking gazingly at the Champions League trophy and Jurgen Klopp at that stage was thinking the Premier League title of course they've subsequently won it um, but Manchester City undoubtedly would want the Champions League Liverpool though in this position and James Milner touched upon this at the weekend where he said just to finish with the one trophy now would be an average season Trent Alexander-Arnold today was saying it's been an excellent season but yet it could still have that feeling of, a, of an anti-climax if they're not able to add to that League Cup success. Absolutely. When, when, when you're so close, and you know, going back to 2003 when, when I was at Celtic and we, we won nothing, if you speak to Celtic fans, they'll, they'll talk about that whole journey and being one of the, the best uh, uh, seasons in, you know, in, in memory. And it's, uh, I suppose, from a Liverpool perspective now, it's about getting over the line, winning the big trophies, you know, winning a Champions League or a Premier League. And if that doesn't happen even though they have played to such a high level this season, the players will go away um, you know, for the summer breaks and there will be massive disappointment. So it's about getting the job done, getting over the line, finishing the season off strongly. When we went to the, uh, to the stadium earlier, we drove up by the, uh, the Balearic coast. Uh, we went through the, uh, past all the ceramic uh, industrial factories because, oh, of course, sounds nice. Villarreal is an industrial town, uh, the heart of the ceramic industry. Uh, and just a word on Villarreal because they've got to have, they've got to give it a go because the first goal is going to be crucial. They're still not out of this. Well, I said that. I said that at the st- when we started this interview. The first goal Symmetry. is absolutely everything. It, it really is. If if Liverpool get the first goal, it's it's game over, and you're going to have a lot of talking to do. You don't mind that, but if Villarreal do get the first Rich goal, from you. it's uh, you know it's game on. And uh, I mean they're an experienced team. They do have the threat. Liverpool just have to be watchful. Don't give Villarreal any encouragement, and then they'll have a bit of a, a comfortable ride, I think. And finally, Liverpool allowed to celebrate if they're to win. <laughs> Liverpool, Liverpool won't go mad if they win. I know where you're going there. That's that's. That's poor from you. I might be getting arrested. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> commentary on BBC Radio 5 Live, yeah. the BBC Sounds app, and you can follow the live tech service on the BBC Sport website. Real against Liverpool, the first of a double dose, because on the Wednesday night, we're also here again in Spain, the Bernabeu, Real Madrid against Manchester City with John Murray and Jonathan Woodgate. So still a lot of live football to look forward to from here in Spain. Adios. Or hasta luego. Champions League nights on the Football Daily Podcast. Jill Scott's Coffee Club. Jill Scott there, it's a little croy turn. Beautiful. Hi, yeah, I'm Jill Scott, England midfielder, coffee obsessive, and dressing room joker. And you left out the second highest capped England player of all time in there, Jill. Oh, I should have put that in, shouldn't I? We're going to be chatting to some of the biggest names in women's football over a cup of coffee. Have you still got that dog that you don't get on with? No, I like him now, yeah, Norman. We had one before that called Jimmy, Thanks, so you couldn't call him like Kyle. <laughs> I went to Nando's and ordered some chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hand. Jill Scott's Coffee Club. Listen on BBC Sounds.